we've seen from the previous lectures that we're going to be talking a lot about vorticity in a flow uh, because we can model uh, the the vorticity on the swing uh, with with some construct that might look like this where where uh, vortices would uh, would lie something like that in the flow well in order to do that we need to understand one more thing and that's called the biot savart law the biot savart law actually comes from the field of electromagnetics uh, saying that if you put a current along a wire uh, and uh, and say that that current is moving in a certain direction it induces a magnetic field a, a directional magnetic field around it uh, according to the right hand rule uh, so if you put your thumb in the direction of, of the this arrow here in the middle then uh, you can see the direction by curling your fingers around that uh, you, you'd see the direction that would be induced this magnetic field that would be induced well we're going to use the same uh, idea except that each of these vortices uh, and uh, we'll draw it the same way we'll have some vortex and we'll look at some differential length of that vortex uh, dl um, it induces a a velocity on a particle uh, or or in the flow field a certain direction or or a, a distance from it so we're going to say uh, that distance is r here that's a vector so we can look at the velocity induced by this vortex filament on some point in uh, in three space that is uh, that is uh, r distance away and uh, and so that would Im induce some directional uh, some velocity uh, on that point okay and that that uh, differential velocity that is created by that differential element um, can be computed from this equation um, is proportional to gamma gamma is the strength of that vortex and then it's equal to dl cross r divided by 4 pi uh, absolute value or magnitude of r cubed. Okay, so this is called the biot savart law. This is simply how we compute the differential velocity induced by a differential segment of, uh, of a vortex. And, uh, and we're going to use this in several different ways. Uh, for example, we're going to be able to integrate along the entire vortex that we're considering. Uh, we'll be able to integrate along that whole thing and, uh, and sum up all of the uh, induced velocity at a single point or in a plane. Um, but we'll be using this law over and over again to, to evaluate how this vortex sheet um, or how this series of vortices influences the flow field around the wing itself.